Hello, my name is Cactus Con Carne, and welcome to my kitchen. Welcome back to the only YouTube cooking show that you need to be watching. Today, we're doing Cactus's Favorite Things. Now, this is a series of holiday items that I love to make every year and bring along with me to family events and obviously my family enjoys them as well. I've made this one for probably about the last five years. Um, since me and my wife have been living together, I've made this and it's been a hit ever since. I've brought it to a family event once, but I've made it for family every year other than that. We're making the fruit cake, and it's not a fruit cake in the sense that it's got candied fruit in it, which everybody hates, and it also doesn't have candied ginger, which I don't like. But you can put candied ginger in it because it's part of the recipe. So I'm going to cut to myself yesterday, and I'm going to explain to you all the ingredients and stuff, and then I'm going to cut back to myself in the present to finish up. Okay, so that was cactus. This is uh, out of order. This is the day before. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what the ingredients are. We're going to take some of them and put them in a container and we're going to pop it in the fridge because it needs to sit at least overnight. I'm going to go 24 hours, but uh, I'll explain that as we're looking so at the ingredients. First things you need are four and a half ounces of golden raisins, which are optional. And they're optional because I don't have them. I'll explain that in a minute. Four ounces of currants, which are optional. Uh, two and a half ounces of cranberries, blueberries, and cherries dried. Now, why dried? Well, because in a fruit cake, candied fruit is what everybody hates in a fruit cake. Now, we've picked dried because we're going to rehydrate them. And it's almost <clears throat> it's almost as good as a fresh fruit once it's rehydrated. Now, the reasons I don't have uh, golden raisins or currants, I don't like currants and my wife doesn't like golden raisins. So I've never used those and it's 100% optional. I think with all of those things it'd be a little bit muddled, but if you really like fruit, go right ahead. It's what the I mean, it's what the recipe calls for. Um, so once you have all those, you also need dried apricots. You need four ounces of those. need yourself the zest of a lemon, just the zest like last time, the zest of an orange, you can also probably use a little bit of the orange juice instead of apple juice, which we'll get to in a minute. That's pretty good. Anyways, um, one and a half ounces of candied ginger, which is optional. Now, the reason I say it's optional is when I was a kid, my mother would always give us candied ginger when we had an upset stomach. And I think that if I were to have it now, it'd probably make me throw up. So I'm not going to put that in there because I don't like having a great big bite of uh, ginger in my mouth. Um, you need one cup of golden rum. Now this is the adult version. Or for people who, you know, can drink freely or like to drink freely or whatever. I don't. And for all of my friends out there that don't, you can substitute that cup of rum for more of the unfiltered apple cider, which we'll also get to in a moment. You need more of this later on. Or you can also sub it for some of the orange juice. A mixture of the two, it'll be great, I'm sure. You need four cloves and I don't have anywhere that I can get cloves, so I always buy powdered. If you can find cloves, use four cloves and grind them up yourself. 
but uh, I'll get actual measurements on these once we get to that step because if you're going to use dried like I am four cloves isn't an exact science with dried you need six allspice berries allspice is this little thing right here these little berries again I can't get uh, allspice berries anywhere near me so I'm just using ground again a half a cinnamon stick which again ground because cinnamon sticks are hard to come by in this hick town uh, eight ounces sugar five ounces of unsalted butter which is in my fridge chilling you need one cup of unfiltered apple juice which is for later you need one teaspoon of ground dry ginger you can't use fresh ginger for this you need ground dry because it's going into the dry ingredients to flavor it it's, you don't want like in like I said big pieces of ginger in there you want it to go all the way through you need nine ounces of all-purpose flour one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt you need one teaspoon each of baking soda and baking powder and you also need two eggs to complete your bread your cake two eggs large and three ounces of pecans chopped now this is a really big list of ingredients we're only going to use the first ten so all of the dried fruit the zest of both the lemon and the orange and because I'm not drinking I'm going to use a cup of the unfiltered apple juice and some of the orange juice because I just it's the first time I've ever done that so I'm going to do that this this time too so um, take all of that stuff get into a nice bowl get in a nice bowl and I'm going to put it in the fridge because I'm using the apple juice if you're using the liquor you can leave it uncut while you cover it because you don't want anything floating in it but you can leave it out of the cold just on your counter overnight or however long because your alcohol will obviously preserve your fruits but because I'm not I'm sticking it in the fridge and that's also another reason why I'm letting it go for 24 hours so like I said um, we'll come all back to it once I've got it in my okay so this is everything in the in the bowl if your bowl once you put everything in it and put the liquid on it does not the liquid doesn't cover the fruit get a smaller bowl because it should cover the fruit That's the whole point of it or else it won't absorb it as fast so this is everything once I juiced my orange I wound up getting about a third of a cup so then I just went the rest of with the unfiltered apple juice so in this bowl is minus the the few couple things that I'm gonna say last there are cranberries blueberries and cherries dried two and a half ounces of each four ounces of dried apricots lemon zest from one whole lemon orange zest from one whole orange and in and around a cup of unfiltered apple juice plus orange juice now the other things that you can add are four and a half ounces of golden raisins the four ounces of currants and the one and a half ounces of candied ginger now once you get your apricots for the bowl cut them like this where are you cut them now because uh, the big pieces of apricot that you are going to use aren't going to mix well into the fruitcake you're just gonna have great big apricots I mean the dried apricots are quite quite large themselves they kinda look like a fuzzy peach 
but uh, not nearly as tasty. And uh, yeah, so cut those up. It also recommends to chop the zest of both the lemon and the orange. I don't because I have my micro rasp like that. It does a pretty decent job of getting it quite fine. So if you're not getting fine enough, uh, I mean, you can barely see it in here, right? So if you're not getting it fine enough, chop it. Uh, put your lid on. Shake it up, make sure everything's covered, it's all nice and mixed together, you don't just have zest on top and, you know, cherries on the bottom or what have you. And then take it and either leave it on your counter and walk away or stick it in your fridge. Now we're going to come back to this tomorrow with the rest of the ingredients and make the rest of the fruitcake. And it's going to take 30 seconds or less in YouTube time. Ready, set, go! Thanks Cactus! Now today we're going to be finishing up the fruit cake. Now these are the I've already been over the ingredients, but these is what we need today. So we'll come down here and we'll take so a look at it. In this little bowl, I've got um, the spices, which is the cloves, the allspice, and the cinnamon. Uh, the fruit is in my other container, which I still need to grab. 8 ounces of sugar, the 5 ounces of butter, a cup of apple juices on the side, and the ginger that we talked about, which was a teaspoon of ginger, if I was correct. A teaspoon of ground dry ginger, right. So that's what's in there. Now, the measurements for the other uh, spices... The four cloves, the six allspice berries, and the half a cinnamon stick. I don't have the actual ingredients, so I've just used dry. And I've used, used half a teaspoon for cloves. I used a teaspoon for allspice berries. And I used a tablespoon of cinnamon. So that's what's gone in here. Now, you need your fruit from the night before, which is soaked up all of my liquid as you can see and it smells quite citrusy so we need that too and don't forget your butter and your apple juice now you need to take all of this and put it into a large saucepan I don't have a large saucepan but I do have a large pot like this and uh, it, it expands quite a bit because you're going to add the flour straight to this pot. So you do need quite a large vessel to do it in. So we're going to move all of these ingredients over to the stove. So take your fruit and plop it straight in. Make sure you get all of that fruity goodness. And your spices, your sugar, your butter, your apple juice, and your ginger. So. Those are my spices and my sugar. My apple juice. And my big old stick of butter. Now I weighed this. It is approximately uh, four and a half ounces, which is enough for me. It's close enough. So I'm just going to add one whole stick of one whole stick of butter in there. Now you want to turn your heat up to a boil, stirring it often because you do have sugar in there and you do not want your sugar to burn. Then you want to reduce your heat and simmer it for 10 minutes. And we'll pick it up from there. Okay, so once your time is up, I still have about 10 seconds, you want to take this and remove it from the heat and let it cool for about 15 minutes. And after you, there's my timer. So we'll remove it from the heat. I'm just going to plop it straight into my cast iron frying pan. It's going to somewhat keep it hot, but not as much as it needs to be. So set it aside, let it cool 15 minutes. Set a timer. And uh, after that, you can either complete the cake, which is what I do, or you can let it cool in the fridge 
even more for up to two days and it'll get even more flavor into the fruit if you let it sit for the two days but I don't have the time and I've never done that and it tastes just fine um, so I'm going to let it sit for the 15 and then we're gonna make the uh, make the cake. While your fruit is cooling take a uh, roasting pan I've got a really big thick uh, like brownie cake pan and fill it about halfway with water and stick it in your oven. Now your racks in your oven need to be at the middle oven rack and the bottom and then turn it on for 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay so this is cooled for 15 minutes. My oven is on for 325 so you need to put the flour, the nine ounces of all-purpose flour, the one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt, one teaspoon of both baking soda and baking powder in a sifter and you're going to sift it on top of your fruit. Now having another hand comes in handy. Ha 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 puns. And so if you have somebody else sift while you're stirring that would be great because you have to make this as quick as possible because it becomes really thick really fast and it's hard to manage if you leave it sit. So once you stir the flour in, then you have to f stir in the eggs one at a time and then fold the pecans. So I'm going to do the flour first and then we'll come back to the eggs and the pecans. So eggs one at a time. One egg in. Stir it until it's completely mixed in. It's quite thick before you start adding the eggs in. I know I had to take turns with my wife stirring because my hand started to cramp because it was so thick. So one egg in and then, oh, get that second egg in and mix. So once you have your eggs in, get your roughly chopped pecans and fold them in. Take them all, just fold these suckers in. Get yourself a nonstick pan again. I'm going to extra nonstick on them because I have a bad habit of having them stick. So this is a 9 by 5 by, well, technically it's 9.25 by 5.25 by 2.75. So that's essentially what you want for your pan. Uh, a 10 inch nonstick loaf pan is essentially what you want. This is close. This is the best I'm going to get in my crappy town. Get yourself a spatula. you get all of your goo inside your pan. Try not to get any on your stove. I always seem to fail at that aspect. Jiggle it a little bit and make sure it gets in all your corners and then take it and put it straight in your oven for one hour or until the internal temperature hits 200 degrees Fahrenheit on your thermometer. I'm going to leave it for an hour and check the temperature then. Oh, make sure you have your water in there because it will keep it from drying out. Put it straight in on your middle oven rack. Once your cake is out of the oven and it's reached the right temperature, you can turn it out onto a cooling rack and then spritz it with some if you now if you're doing the alcoholic version you can spritz it with some brandy now I'm not going to do that 
because I'm not using the alcoholic version. But I'm going to leave it in its pan until it's cooled, and then I'm going to turn it out. So I'm going to give it maybe 20 minutes, and then I'm going to turn it out onto a cooling rack. There you have it. Free range fruitcake. This is always nice to something to bring along or to have any time in the winter, whenever, fruitcake, whenever you feel like having it. I personally love this fruitcake, um, but I'm biased because I like regular fruitcake as well. Um, other people that I know that do not like fruitcake whatsoever find this a hundred percent better than regular fruitcake. Uh, my wife can attest to that. Um, I mean, slice it up, have it with some, some eggnog, some tea, milk in general, whatever. Doesn't matter. Just have it uh, by itself, even. And, uh, I mean, enjoy every, every piece. Uh, that's it for this week. Uh, next episode is going to be another mystery, but it is going to be another Cactus's favorite things. So it is another thing that's uh, nice to bring along for the holidays or holiday themed. So we'll catch that uh, in two weeks time. Uh, I have been Cactus Con Carne. This has been Cactus Cooks. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.